Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen, welcome back to Sunday morning and the old cookbook show. Um, I'm not sure if I'm ready, I'm not sure if I'm ready for this one yet. I'm, I'm really not sure if I'm ready for this one yet. This is a recipe that I did a lot of research on uh, a couple months ago. Wrote up this whole thing, was getting ready to do it, and then sort of chickened out. Um, I'm going to start out, I'm going to start out by boiling some eggs. So. Here I've got some eggs. These came from Cousin Jill's hens. Um, she sent us some white eggs, some pretty blue eggs, um, and some brown eggs. So I've got a pot here, and we're gonna boil these eggs. The recipe we're making is scotch eggs. Um, and the reason I sort of didn't wanna do them is there are some recipes I know um, people have a very strong opinion about and an emotional attachment to and if you sort of show them that what they believe today wasn't where the recipe started they get really upset and I thought this might be one of those recipes and so I have in front of me here a selection of some cookbooks that hold historical significance in the evolution of the scotch egg um, this one in particular this book, and this is the actual book from 1807, is um, credited as the first cookbook to have a scotch egg recipe in it. I think an earlier printing, um, 1805, is the, is the original printing. It has the, the recipe in it. This is 1807, still has a scotch egg recipe in it, and it's the one we're going to do today. So, um, let me read the recipe to you. Scotch eggs boil hard boil hard. I'm going to boil them hard. That's the thing. Um, so first up, 2023, you go on the internet or you go on the TV and you listen to some uh, TV chef or internet cook tell you about scotch eggs. The perfect scotch egg is a soft boiled egg in the middle and the yolk is supposed to be a little bit runny. In the very first printed recipe, boil hard. So I'm going to hard boil mine. Um, Boil hard five pullets eggs. I'm only doing two because it's just Julie and I home tonight. And without removing the white, cover completely with a fine relishing force meat. So force meat, um, in the context of this time period, force meat is sausage meat. So you're looking at uh, something fine relishing force meat. You're looking at something that has spices and all kinds of other things in it. Um, I'm going to use our homemade sausage and you can watch Julie and I make this elsewhere on the channel. In which, let scraped ham or chopped anchovy bear a due proportion. Now, in the context of this, of this cookbook, um, scraped ham is chopped fresh pork meat, not cured ham. If they had wanted cured ham, they would have said cured ham. Whereas today, when we say ham, we mean cured ham. And if we want to have fresh pork leg, we say fresh ham. Um, Language changes over time. The chopped anchovy is quite interesting. Um, it shows up in these later cookbooks as well. Fry a beautiful yellow brown and serve with a good gravy in the dish. Now, um, today as well, most recipes tell you to deep fry them. And by the time you get to this cookbook, the Scottish Women's Rural Institute cookery book from 1938, there's two recipes. They're not called scotch eggs. They're called sausage eggs. They don't use scotch eggs. Um, one of them is pan fried and one of them is deep fried. So these earlier recipe books are all pan fried, not deep fried. And also in these earlier recipes, you're not coating it in breadcrumbs before you deep fry it. You're just frying it with the sausage meat on the outside. This is, uh, this is 1829. Um, Pretty much the same recipe. Pretty much the same recipe at this point, 1829. You get to this one. This is an, so this was a Scottish cookbook as well. This is Mrs. Dodd's Scottish cookbook, published in Edinburgh. This is a Scottish cookbook. This is an English cookbook, and it has Scotch eggs. By this point in 1902, you are putting egg and breadcrumbs on the outside before you fry it. There doesn't seem to be any sort of consensus on where this recipe starts. It is telling, somewhat telling, that the first published recipe, or what is believed to be the first published recipe, appears in a Scottish cookbook. So, 
a Scotch egg probably does appear first in Scotland. Um, where the crux of the idea comes from, no one can really say. Also, the name Scotch egg seems to be um, something that people argue about. I think those eggs are done. I'm going to get those out of the water. So, so far, no one has been able to pinpoint the, the sort of the, the kernel of the idea of where this scotch egg came from. As to the name, there's a whole bunch of theories. The theories are never ending. Uh, the word scotch comes from an older word that means score. Some people take score to mean cut, cut or chop or mince. Um, and so because it's got the minced force meat around the outside, Obviously, scotch is a reference to that earlier meaning of the word. Um, other people attribute it to a certain restaurant that was run by the Scots family. Uh, that one is pretty much, uh, no one believes that anymore. Um, well, some people still believe that. Scholars no longer believe that. The one that I'm going to get firmly behind um, is the one that I was able to research the most about. And it's the idea that um, scotch eggs comes from an earlier type of scotch egg that was a preserved egg. And so my research, I was able to pinpoint, or the first time I was able to pinpoint the word scotch egg turning up in print was from 1777. And that's up on the screen right now. It is a mention in a newspaper from September 4th, 1777, that the price of eggs had shot up because bakers um, were unable to get scotch eggs and they had to use fresh local eggs in their baking. Now there's no mention in this article what a scotch egg actually is in this time period, but the fact that it says fresh egg, we can sort of infer that they mean a preserved egg. The next instance of scotch egg that I'm able to find in newspapers, um, and I spent a lot of time pouring through newspaper databases. Um, searching for this, calling people, emailing people, trying to find these things. And this research is, is um, flawed. You know, there's no other way to put it. It's flawed. It's definitely flawed because not everything is uh, digitized and searchable. There's lots of newspapers that haven't been digitized. There's lots of these books that haven't been digitized, aren't searchable. There's lots of printed material that has been lost through fire, war, destruction, um, neglect. And so we'll never really get a full picture. But the next version that I'm able to find is from 1818, October 1818. And this refers to a coroner's inquest into the death of a child who drank from a cup that held oil of vitriol. Now, oil of vitriol, um, that's hard for me to say, oil of vitriol is actually sulfuric acid. And it was used for a whole bunch of things, but this family was accused of using it to clean the stains from scotch eggs so that they could be sold as fresh. Um, and certainly, uh, by this time period already, I can see in this book from 1807, in the back, there is a recipe for scotch eggs. Um, same one that has the first printed recipe for what we're doing today, scotch eggs. So it's got two scotch egg recipes. And the one further back, um, I'm going to read the whole thing because I think it's hilarious. To choose eggs at market and preserve them. Put the large egg of the egg to your tongue. If it feels warm, it is new. Well, yeah, <laughs> of course it is. You've never had a fresh laid egg? Um, it's warm. It is warm. It just came out of a chicken. It's warm. In new laid eggs, there is a small division of the skin from the shell, which is filled with air and is perceptible to the eye at the end. On looking through them against the sun or a candle, if fresh, eggs will be pretty clear. If they shake, they are not fresh. Eggs may be bought cheapest when the hens first begin to lay in the spring before they sit in Lent and at Easter they become deer. So in this time period, chickens were roaming in the farmyard. They weren't intensively farmed in warehouses. They were subject to... Um, changing seasons and changing temperatures, and so their, their laying changed. They may be preserved fresh by dipping them in boiling water and instantly taking them out, or by oiling the shell 
either of which ways is to prevent the air passing through it, or kept on shelves with small holes to receive one in each and be turned every other day, or close packed in a keg and covered with strong lime water. Now, uh, Julie and I used to live in the bush and we would wax eggs because they lasted longer. Um, so these scotch eggs are being preserved. You can still use it as a fresh egg. It's not a fresh egg, but you crack it open and you use it in baking or cooking or something like that. We gather that they're stained from the earlier um, newspaper piece that talks about them taking the stains out with sulfuric acid. And I see references in newspapers in the 1820s and the 1880s all the way through showing these preserved scotch eggs being shipped around the world. Um, and you can see them in ship manifests and port manifests, etc., etc. So I, I firmly believe that it's called the scotch egg because in its fried state, it resembles the preserved scotch egg, the way that it was stained and possibly mottled. I know, that was a lot of talking. A lot of talking for something that is essentially just a boiled egg with some sausage around the outside. So, um, what it comes down to is you, we're never gonna figure out, I don't think, where this originated. Um, and I don't think we're ever going to come down to know exactly why it's called a scotch egg, but you know, I firmly believe what I just said. So, I've got the sausage meat. Um, one of the things I see in a lot of scotch eggs is that the, the sausage is too thick around the outside of the egg, and I'm, I'm worried that I'm going to make it too thick, but essentially you make a patty, you put your egg in, and you wrap it around. And if it takes you two or three tries to get it right, that's okay. Just keep trying. Eventually, you'll get it. And I mean, that's the first one I've ever made. So, okay, so there you go. Two scotch eggs. Take your time. If you've never done this before, I'd never done this before. Take your time. Don't get frustrated. Just take your time and do it. And if it's your first time making something like this, I would definitely say hard boil your eggs. Don't worry about soft boiling. Forget Get about all of the pressure to do it as a soft boiled egg. Take, at, take that stress out of your day, hard boil them, and then just get them covered in the sausage. I'm gonna stick these in the fridge for about an hour because Julie's not gonna be home for a little while. So I'll see you back here for the frying. Okay, so I've got the oil hot here, about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And in go the eggs. So 350 degrees Fahrenheit is a good starting temperature for your oil. Um, the thicker your sausage layer, the lower the temperature that you want to use. It's counterintuitive. And that's because you, you want to cook the sausage all the way through before the exterior browns or burns. So that lower temperature is going to get you there. So maybe go down to 320. It's covered in sausage. I don't think you have to worry about it soaking up too much oil. Now, because I am shallow pan frying these, I'm going to keep turning them to make sure they cook evenly. If you are deep fat frying them, you don't have to do that. You just make sure they're submerged in the oil. Okay. I'm going to say we're done. And I got to tell you, I hate deep frying or even shallow frying. Such a hey, mess. Hey, mess. Hey, friends. Yes, Oil. that is a mess. Everywhere. Okay. Well, I guess you kindly uh, used a shallow pan so everyone could see. Yes. Now, <laughs> deeper um, pan would... oh, my, my wrapping, my wrapping wasn't, you know, it's not A1 well, plus Well, you made wrapping. two. So, and so you've got a 50-50 chance on your skill here, which... Well, and that's, so, I often see comments from people saying, 
I've got a big dinner this weekend. I'm going to try this recipe. And I think to myself, no, you're setting yourself up for disaster. And yet, no, because, you know, what's the worst thing that happens? Well, you I, I know. know. That's, that really, is that really that bad? No. Try a small amount first. Make your mistakes at home. And then try to show off. Or with good friends. Or with good friends, yes. So, <laughs> good friends. So we got one that's that looks pretty good and one that, you know, the the stuffing. Well, it's not just stuffing at the at that time. Your the egg? wrapping. The wrapping came off. Okay, so I've never had a scotch egg. You t had mentioned we were having scotch eggs. I've never had one either. But on TV, they're always breaded. Yes, these are not breaded. And, and often they're soft and gooey in the inside. And I, I never understand how that happens when they're deep fried. Um, or how that... Like, I feel like... The egg would, no matter what you did, would finish cooking. Okay, what do so, I know? so the soft, the soft boiled egg, the, the 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 thing is, you chill it in cold water before you peel it. That stops the cooking all the way through. Okay. Then when you when you put the force meat on the outside or the sausage on the outside and fry it, it should not get hot all the way through or hot okay. enough all the way through to finish cooking that egg. Okay, that makes sense when you say it. It's like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, but these these are from. 1807. So they are boiled so within an inch of its life. Boiled hard. Boiled. <laughs> boiled hard. And it says that right in the instructions. <laughs> Boil hard. Okay. So I'm going to cut it in half just to, you know, as a starter. Is that okay? Yep. Oh. Ah, that looks pretty good. Huh. That's not as hard boiled as I thought it was going to be. It's almost runny. I could have made them runny. But that's not what the instructions said. Huh. So, um, it's going to be hot. Do you I think know. it's going to be hot enough? Well, let's... I do think it's going to be hot. That's not too bad. Okay, Glenn says... It's not too bad. Glenn says okay. So, uh, the first mention of this that I see in the United States <laughs> Don't know how to cut is it. in a newspaper from 1883 in Boston. <clears throat> the Boston Cooking School, a very famous cooking school in the United States, oh, um, no in they did a cooking demonstration that featured scotch eggs. I'm gonna okay, you're gonna have the one. I'm gonna take this. Oh, you're gonna take the whole half. Yeah, okay, take you're brave. Piece. Not to be too obvious, but it's sausage and egg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's our homemade so it sausage. Great. You can use any sausage you want. I think these early recipes are so vague. You could use any sausage. I don't know that it needs the breading. I mean, I have, okay, so full disclosure, I've never had one. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the breading brings, but to me, that doesn't need breading. That's fine just the way Maybe it is. Maybe that brings the toast flavor. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, yes. Just saying, egg, sausage, toast. toast. It's all rolled into one. So if you've had a scotch egg, let us know <laughs> if, it, what, if it does bring that kind of flavor to it. So it is a very simple recipe. It is probably one of the earliest versions of fast food. Everything that I've read about it, everything that I've read about it is that in the early 1800s, it was meant as a fast food. You'd pick one up and you'd, and you'd go on your way and you'd eat it as you're, as you're moving. Provides everything that you need, almost. There's no vegetables. Um, but a very convoluted story about where it started and how it got its name. And I'm sticking with the preserved egg thing. That's me. That's I'm on. I'm on. Okay. I'm on team preserved Scotch eggs. Noted. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.